This video includes a paid sponsorship from Span, but I'll talk more about that later. It's official, Tesla will soon be opening a portion of their supercharger network in the United States to non-Tesla EVs, as was confirmed by an official WhiteHouse.gov briefing. In this video, I wanna discuss a number of details about this rollout, not only the timing and the um, number of chargers that Tesla will be opening up um, to the public, but I also wanna talk about Tesla's plans to massively um, increase the size of their supercharger network, and in addition, some of the federal subsidies that Tesla is now going to be open to with this new open policy for their superchargers. So without further ado, let's dive in. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. In an official release posted on whitehouse.gov, which details the Biden administration's goals of building out a nationwide charging network of 500,000 EV chargers by 2030, it was mentioned that Tesla would be opening a portion of their charging network in the United States to the public. This is of course something that Tesla has been talking about for a while, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later on, but Tesla has also opened up a portion of their chargers um, in other countries. Specifically, many of those countries are located in Europe. With this official announcement, the United States will soon be added to that list. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into some quotes from this announcement related to Tesla. Tesla, for the first time, will open a portion of its US supercharger and destination charger network to non-Tesla EVs, making at least 7,500 chargers available for all EVs by the end of 2024. The open chargers will be distributed across the United States. They will include at least 3,500 new and existing 250 kilowatt superchargers along highway corridors to expand freedom of travel for all EVs and level two destination charging at locations like hotels and restaurants in urban and rural locations. All EV drivers will be able to access these stations using the Tesla app or website. Notice that this rollout will not include all of Tesla's chargers, just a portion of them, specifically um, at least 7,500 or so. And also note that that 7,500 charger number includes not only DC fast superchargers, but also the slower destination chargers as well. But will this cause an inconvenience for Tesla drivers that currently still sometimes have to wait at supercharger locations at peak times like holidays, etc.? Will this cause more congestion and cause problems where you have to wait for a charger whereas you didn't have to as much before? I want to address this issue directly and also compare these numbers that are going to be open to the rest of Tesla's supercharging network in the United States. But before I do that, I want to introduce the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to Span for sponsoring this video. If you're currently considering a solar and battery backup installation at your home, or if you are looking to upgrade your current electric panel, you definitely need to check out Span. Replace your old electrical panel with a Span Smart Panel to access remote circuit level control and energy generation and usage monitoring with their iOS or Android app. With all of the data that this smart panel will allow you to have at your fingertips, you'll be able to use that data to make smarter energy usage decisions and even possibly save on your energy bills. To find out more and get a quote for your particular situation, go over to span.io or click the link in the video description. And when you do fill out that form to get a quote, make sure that you put CleanerWatt in the comments section so they know that I sent you. Okay, so with this announcement, Tesla plans to at least open up 7,500 chargers by the end of 2024 in the United States to non-Tesla EVs. Now, globally, Tesla currently has over 40,000 chargers, individual chargers, not locations, but if you count every charger, at these locations. To be more specific, by the end of 2022, as was reported in Tesla's Q4 2022 investors update presentation, globally, Tesla had over 4,600 supercharger station locations. And if you count all the individual chargers at those stations, that number is over 42,000, which is an average of nine chargers per location. However, the global number is really not the most important number that we need to talk about. We need to actually compare the 7,500 chargers or so that Tesla plans to open up in the United States by the end of 2024, we need to compare that to how many chargers they currently have in the United States alone and how many they plan to have in the future. 
So once again, Tesla is not going to do this immediately. This is going to happen uh, by the end of 2024. But if Tesla were to flip the switch today and open up 75 100 chargers, and once again, that 7,500 number includes not only superchargers, but destination chargers. And I didn't calculate the exact number of destination chargers that Tesla currently has in the United States, but if you just include the superchargers based on information from supercharge.info, in the United States, Tesla apparently has over 18,000 individual chargers, meaning that in a worst case scenario, not even including destination chargers, but just superchargers, if that were to be all superchargers, that number would represent 41.3% of the network. That's of course a really substantial portion However, Tesla is looking to massively grow their supercharging network in the coming years. And we'll talk about federal subsidies that should help that. But this White House briefing said, quote, additionally, Tesla will more than double its full nationwide network of superchargers manufactured in Buffalo, New York. While this doubling of Tesla's supercharger network comment didn't come with a specific date attached to it, I do believe that Tesla is going to take care of existing owners and only sustainably open the supercharging network as they have capacity to do so. This is actually something Tesla directly addresses on their website on a page specifically about them opening up their supercharger network to non-Tesla EVs. And under this question, this common question of will more sites open to non-Tesla vehicles, they say at the end of that, future sites will only be open to non-Tesla vehicles if there is available capacity. Now, moving beyond that 7,500 charger number, which includes uh, not only superchargers, but some destination chargers. As I mentioned earlier, at least 3,500 of these chargers will be V3 or 250 kilowatt superchargers. When it comes to how this 3,500 number compares to the existing number of V3 superchargers that Tesla has, which from what I can tell is the only supercharger type that Tesla is installing right now. Now we will have a V4 supercharger coming in the future, and I believe that's not too far off in the future with a Cybertruck coming up. But as it sits right now, when you look at Tesla's most recent installations, those are for V3 superchargers and the V2 and the Urban, I don't see any new installations of those going in, at least based on my research. But based on information from supercharge.info, in the United States, Tesla apparently has over 10,000 and actually just a bit under 11,000 individual 250 kilowatt chargers. Obviously by the end of 2024, the number of V3 or for that matter, V4 superchargers, so let's just say V3 or greater uh, superchargers, that number will be greater than it is today. But just for some basic math to kind of represent how many V3 or greater superchargers will be open to the public, right now, based on that 10,938 number that we talked about from supercharge.info, 3,500 would be 32% of the existing V3 superchargers. If Tesla is able to double their network in the future, which would mainly mean adding over 18,000 V3 or greater superchargers to their network, that number could possibly go over 29,000 of these chargers and 3,500 would only be around 12% of that network. Okay, moving beyond that, let's talk a little bit about federal subsidies and the logistics of this. So first of all, when it comes to federal subsidies, according to this White House briefing, President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law invests $7.5 billion in EV charging. When it comes to the exact subsidy amounts and how much companies can get for installing supercharging networks, on an official U.S. Department of Energy webpage, it states that under the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure or NEVI formula program, funding is available for up to 80% of eligible project costs. If Tesla is able to get an 80% subsidy for the cost to install a supercharging network that is open to the public, this makes me think that Tesla would want to lean more into opening up new locations and making those available to non-Tesla EVs because that it seems like would make the most sense financially and would give Tesla the most bang for their buck. Also, it's important to note that these federal incentives in Tesla's hands are going to be much more efficient than if you gave that money to other companies. It's very possible that Tesla might be able to install five chargers for what it costs the competition to install one charger. For instance, in this April 15th of 2022 Electric article, it was pointed out that apparently it only costs Tesla around one fifth as much to deploy a charger as compared to the competition. This article specifically mentions that Tesla likely pays somewhere around $43,000 per charger versus somewhere around $200,000 for the competition. So I don't know about you, but since this federal subsidy is coming from US taxpayers, 
I would much rather have my tax money going towards a company like Tesla that can put out five chargers for the price of one. So I hope Tesla is incentivized for uh, being so efficient and hopefully they can deploy a large number of superchargers available to non-Tesla EVs because of this subsidy. Now beyond the federal subsidies, we of course have to mention the logistics of a non-Tesla EV charging at Tesla supercharger locations because Tesla has a proprietary connector that they have now opened up to other EVs that want to add it, but other EVs don't have a Tesla connector. They have usually a CCS2 connector. Tesla's charging connector, which they now call the North American Charging Standard, allows for a much smaller connector size, and in many ways, it's far superior to CCS connectors. However, since non-Tesla EVs in production right now do not have this connector, apparently Tesla is going to be deploying what is called a magic dock, as opposed to having a separate CCS2 cable like they do in Europe. When it comes to speculation of how this magic dock will work, Owen Sparks on Twitter speculated that, quote, magic dock is how all electric vehicles will be able to utilize the Tesla supercharging network, the most reliable charging network in North America with just one cable. This is how it works. For Teslas, the experience is the same. The cable easily unlatches from the station and you plug in. For CCS vehicles, when unlatching the cable from the station, it locks to a NACS to CCS adapter allowing you to charge. The adapter is always locked either to the magic dock or to the NACS connector. In normal use, it will be locked to the magic dock and will act as a cable holder. But when a CCS vehicle needs to charge, it locks to the NACS connector and unlocks for the magic dock. This is of course not an official explanation of how this works, but this is just speculation because Owen does clarify that this is just speculation based on a leaked image of the magic dock in the Tesla app, first caught by Brandon Flash and reported by Drive Tesla Canada. I'm really pleased that this is finally happening in the United States and that Tesla will be opening up some chargers to non-Tesla EVs because currently right now existing DC fast charging networks have not been very reliable, but Tesla's network is very reliable. And the ultimate goal Obviously, we want Tesla to grow, but the ultimate goal is for the full transition of our transportation over to electric, to clean electric vehicles. And for a lot of people, the lack of a reliable charging infrastructure could discourage them from buying an electric vehicle. So this could encourage more electric vehicle purchases in the future. And also, if Tesla is able to get an 80% subsidy, this could help Tesla uh, build out even more superchargers even quicker. And once again, Tesla can apparently build out these networks much more efficiently than pretty much anyone else. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also want to say once again, thank you to Span for sponsoring this video. And also thanks to the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make these videos possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.